Hi, Mike Mesolongo here with BibleTalk.tv. Uh, this uh, series is entitled 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You. And this is session number three entitled Decluttering Our Lives. I want to read a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 to 18 to begin our session today. Paul says, But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Note that in this passage, Paul says that the Christian experience is one of change. He uses the word transformation. Ongoing change is the, the name of the game. Spiritual maturity is a journey, not simply a destination. Because it is so, the process is often difficult, uncomfortable, and quite challenging at times. However, the satisfaction and peace obtained far outweigh any inconveniences. Now, in our last session, I said that intimacy with God helped us become more like God or godly. The idea was that the closer we draw to God, the more he would mold us into his image and the likeness of Christ. It is the simple idea that we tend to copy and repeat the character and behavior of those we closely associate with, good or bad. So, an intimate relationship with God yields a greater imprint of his character on us. Now, I also said that for intimacy with God to develop, we must first conform to his will. This is where the first step to maturity, personal discipline, factors in. Next, let him deal with us on his terms and his timetable. And so in today's session, we will talk about the third step to spiritual maturity, the condition that permits intimacy to take place, and that is simplicity. A simple life promotes intimacy with God. In the book, So You Want to Be Like Christ, Chuck Swindoll lists five sources of mind-life clutter common to the 21st century lifestyle. The first, he says, we say yes to too many things. Number two, we do not plan for regular leisure and rest. Number three, we rarely take the time to savor and enjoy the pleasure of accomplishments. Number four, we owe more than we can repay comfortably. And number five, we think technology is actually simplifying and improving our lives. I'm going to give you a chance to comment on these uh, questions here in the discussion question part of this session. For now, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 and 3. Paul says, For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Note that Paul says that whatever physical goals we may have, finish college, save for retirement, lose weight, whatever, our spiritual and thus primary goal is simple faith and devotion to Christ. Now, the Greek word for simple is haplotes, a word referring to a piece of cloth without a crease in it. Too much clutter in your mind and life leaves too little room for simple devotion to God and Christ. For intimacy to grow, we need to simplify. We need to weed out the garden of our mind and heart and everyday life. Simplifying my life. Well, here are a few strategies you can use in order to simplify your life. First, learn to say no. Not every opportunity or need is a calling from God. There will always be more to do, more needs to care for than there is time or strength. So choose carefully what you can do well and trust that God can raise others to do the rest. For example, Jesus had only 12 apostles. He stayed in his own region. He preached primarily to the Jews. So learn uh, to not overcomplicate your life by saying no. If it is truly God who is calling you, he'll find a way to reach you. 
Number two, make time for rest without guilt. God designed us in such a way that we need rest, and a lot of it. Jesus rested, and he encouraged his apostles to rest as well. So it's okay to do nothing, to shut down the machinery of thought uh, and the constant turning of our ambitions and our to-do list. Number three, take charge of debt. Get rid of junk and material overload by paying down debt. Instead of staying on the treadmill of materialism by buying more stuff, invest in your peace of mind by lightening your debt load. Now, the best way to control debt is to prioritize spending. Here's an example of a simplified spending plan. First, God's portion first. It is the sanctified part. Two, Caesar's portion, taxes, dues, etc. Three, obligations, family needs, debts, transportation. Four, yourself, savings, investments, education. Five, recreation, holidays, outings, new purchases. You see, by putting God first, you discipline yourself for greater simplicity in life since you are consciously putting God first and new stuff, play things, you're putting those things last. The financial shift will ultimately make your entire life more about him and less about stuff and thus much simpler to manage. Number four. Make time for you and God alone. In 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7, Peter says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, having cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. You know, the famous retailer J.C. Penney, who was a devout Christian, once said, If you're too busy to worship God on the Lord's day, you're just too busy. So simplifying your life will not only give you more time with God, but it will also give you more time. All right, well, that's our session uh, for this time uh, on the topic of simplicity. There are some discussion questions that I've got uh, for you to discuss. And after you've done these, uh, we'll go ahead and do the next session. So here are the discussion questions. Question number one, describe what your day would be like if you lost your cell phone. How would it be different? Question number two. In your opinion, which of the five sources of clutter mentioned in the devotional listed below most complicate your life and why? Say yes to too many things. No plan for rest or leisure. Don't take time to savor accomplishments. Owe more than we can repay. Reliance on tech to simplify life. Question number three. Describe in your own words how the Greek word for simplicity, haplotes, a piece of cloth with no crease, adequately describes simplicity. As a group, try to come up with five examples. For example, a piece of cloth with no crease is like simplicity in that, and you fill in the rest. Question number four. Describe the first step you would need to take in order to simplify your life. Question number five. In your opinion, what do you think would be the greatest benefit for you personally if your life was more simple? What is holding you back from making a change?